Hey, this is Bree. Welcome to my garden. Today is a huge planting day. We have got to get this summer garden in. We still have time, but the real thing I'm up against is that the plant starts have got to get into the ground before they die. <laughs> There's that. I also have so much to do in here. Incredible cabbages to harvest. I need to turn over my lettuce beds so I can plant more lettuces and more carrot. I still have my perennial beds that I need to finish planting, but so today it's the summer garden. Thankfully, my dream team is here, Heather and her kids. Jackson really wants to see if there's gonna be snakes. Yeah, well, I'm glad Jackson's here because I don't wanna know if there's I snakes. I don't wanna know either. All right, let's take off all of the sandbags and then we'll pull the tarps off. There's more than one tarp. got the tarps off of the rest of the summer garden and we actually put them in places where I'm gonna make new beds. My hope is that this is gonna be a cut flower bed and this is gonna be a strawberry bed and maybe also asparagus. So we were discussing what we we're gonna plant. Originally we were going to plant tomatoes and then I realized those had not been hardened off from the greenhouse. So we're actually not gonna plant those but we are gonna get the peppers planted today and a bunch of other stuff. I'm only doing one row of tomatoes because I'm not trying to grow a year's worth. I just wanna have good eaten. And then we're gonna do a row of peppers. We'll do um, some okra and squash and things like that here. And then we're gonna do four rows of sweet potatoes. So I have a variety here, not too much of a variety, but I do have quite a few sweet peppers going in. I am growing Ace, Orange King, Golden Star, sweet pepper, some jalapenos, and some shishitos. I brought you Sugar Rush Peach and a shishito and that other two. So we can do two. I probably don't even have enough to fill this bed, which maybe I'll just try to get more. I bought this auger here to plant all of my tomatoes and peppers with. Especially since you plant tomatoes really deep. Peppers, you don't plant that deep, but tomatoes you plant really deep. This thing is super helpful. Um, we really don't need to use that for the peppers, but we're gonna, cause we're excited about using it. <laughs> all right, I'm gonna lay them out by heat. So we'll do some jalapenos. There's another shoshita. Shoshita. Yep. I'm not actually planning to plant a whole lot of peppers. We're actually gonna just go ahead and add some, we're gonna go ahead and add some eggplant and some squash in here and enjoy the screaming children. They're actually screaming because they're happy. Here we are. You're gonna work. This is completely unnecessary, um, but we're gonna use it anyway. Cause we're, it's exciting. Cause it's fun, that's why. Did it work? Yeah, it's kinda hard to, oh. They're always hard to, Woo! They're always hard to pull back out. Mine gets completely stuck. <laughs> I'm like hitting a rock. Yeah, that's okay. That's deep enough. Okay. But you still have to dig it out, I guess? Yeah. Do you have a hand shovel? Oh, yeah. Where are they? Oh, I almost broke my wrist. Yeah, it will. Be careful. Wow. Don't we were using the auger. I think it's a little too deep for the peppers, which I knew. I just wanted to have fun drawing it out. We're gonna plant these nine to 12 inches apart. Probably if you had really great, great soil, you could do a little closer. This is terrible soil with a little bit of compost. Peppers don't mind terrible soil, but I mean, there still has to be like aeration and nutrition in it, which the clay is really bad for having either one of those things. So it's really difficult for the roots to tunnel through and extract the nutrition. Okay, when you plant your peppers, you're only gonna wanna plant up to the top of the root ball. Peppers aren't like tomatoes. When you plant tomatoes, you wanna plant them as deep as you can because they're gonna shoot roots out the side, which are gonna stabilize them and provide more roots for soaking up all that good nutrition. Peppers will grow roots out the side, but it takes a lot longer. Therefore, and oftentimes what happens is the stem will rot before those roots are fully grown. Some people say you can plant peppers just above these seed leaves here, and it's fine and it will stabilize the plant more. I've, nev oops, I've never done that. I've always just planted right up to the root ball because that's how I learned how to do it. But if you did plant it a little bit deeper, I don't think it's going to necessarily hurt it. I think the risk though is just um, the stem rotting. I 
know. For my kids, I was like, whoa. I think I want to go get into slip and slide <laughs> and cool off. It's a very hot day for around here. Honestly, transplanting in the middle of the day like this is not the best idea. Plants like to be transplanted on cool, overcast days or like at least not in the middle of the day in the direct sunlight. <laughs> That's exactly what I'm doing. Partly because this is the day I could get it done. Partly because the weather report was for overcast and rain. The best is whenever you plant. Yeah, it was pretty incredible. I just stood there and watched it. It's like, go. We are gonna plant some squash and zucchini. We are not big squash and zucchini eaters. However, now that I have a freeze dryer, I'm very interested in growing more squash, like summer squash, crookneck squash, and zucchini. I'm more interested in growing those because I can freeze dry them into chips or into powder to add to thicken soups and stews and things like that, and with all this added nutrition. So. I did get four plants, two crookneck squash, two zucchini, and we'll see how they do. Maybe I'll plant more than two of those next year. Squash and zucchini need a lot of space, at least two feet between them and any other plants. One, they're huge plants, which means that their root system is gonna be massive underneath the soil. Two, because they're such large plants, you're gonna want space enough that there's airflow to help prevent pest diseases especially, fungal diseases especially. And also you want to be able to see what's happening with the fruit under your plants. I don't know about you, but I can't tell you how many times I have gone out to my squash or zucchini plants and found huge ones because I did never even saw the fruit coming in. Keeping summer squash and zucchini planted really far apart is key to a good healthy plant. Another thing that's going to help you have a great harvest with squash and zucchini is going to be pruning them, which I'll show you when it's time. We're going to plant all these different types of basil down the middle of the beans just for fun. That's the only reason, and to attract good, good pollinators, good insects. This is red ruby basil, lemon basil, and Thai basil. The benefit of planting these is one, they just make me happy. <laughs> That's the number one benefit. Um, the other thing is, is their flowers are absolutely gorgeous for putting in flower arrangements. Um, like as filler, but even as like a just a bouquet of itself. We can also make teas with these basils. We can make pestos with these basils. So ha they have a different flavor than the Genovese, which is what you would use to be making pesto with. And I do have a bunch of that to plant. But this is mostly for me to just have a smile on my face, but also to attract beneficial pollinators and insects into this garden. Happy baby digging in the dirt there. All right, we're gonna plant sweet potatoes. This is the Beauregard variety. It's a very standard variety. It's pretty much what you eat in the grocery store, this variety. Um, I picked it because I've grown it before and also it was easy to get. And then we're gonna plant these 18 inches apart. I think I have 100 plants that should fill up these four rows. Come here, baby girl. Sweet potatoes are gonna come in what's called a slip which is a little baby plant. A slip is a little baby plant that grows off the side of an actual sweet potato. You can grow your own slips from sweet potatoes that you have in your house, or you can buy them. I buy them because I need so many. If you only need a few, then that would work just fine, or if you had a whole lot of space to lay out so many sweet potatoes. So this is what we're working with here. They looked a whole lot better when they came to me, but I couldn't plant them right away. What I could have done was come out here and dig a hole and stick them in the ground like this until I could plant them. But it was just one of those days where I couldn't even get that done. The cool thing about slips is you're gonna see that the leaves wilt first, but that the stems are perfectly healthy and fine. And that's because they're created to protect the energy in the stems and wilt first in the leaves. If your leaves are wilting like this, but your stem looks totally healthy and good, these are just fine to plant. 
you're gonna plant your slip about four inches deep. You're gonna plant those 18 inches apart all the way down the row. I'm only gonna do one down the middle of the row. Your slips might look a little rough after planting or even on the brink of death but as long as you water them in really good over the next few days they will perk right back up will not be watering though till this evening because it is pure sunshine right now and it would just burn my plants this is hilarious <laughs> i'm sorry i called it these babies were done with having their siblings watch them you want some juice can you give Royal some? Yes, take a eat. is that my beds aren't as wide as the cattle panels if they were like next year I should probably do the cattle panels from bed to bed oh so yeah. I can use the whole width of the cattle panel you yeah, know what I mean they're five feet wide yeah That's so I'm normally wide. using three feet I'm gonna plant them in the fall is from what I'm reading you should do that oh the snapdragons what else can you do a lot of stuff it's called a cold hardy annual and you sow them in the fall take care of all that it's, a it's lot. going okay so far okay good the Same tomatoes here. are the most labor intensive. My poor tomatillo. No, it's good. I burned his leaves because okay. I knew better and I watered it in the middle of the day the other day. But it's I was gonna knew I was gonna be gone all day. Oh yeah, Get you're new. coming back to life. Yep. We're just planting this one tomatillo. You do have to plant at least two in order to get fruit. And I have four more to plant, but they aren't hard enough. Mm -hmm. But I want to plant this one because he needs to come out of his pot and be in the soil. Where do you want him to go? Just right there. He can be first. Right here. These guys are Tithonia, which is also known as Mexican sunflower. It's a really pretty orange sunflower. And <clears throat> I don't really have a spot for it, but... This is kind of an extra bed to put various things like okra, probably some more cucumbers, things like that. Since we don't eat a whole lot of okra, but I just want to grow it because it's fun. We'll put the tithonia. I think I'm gonna put it like on the front of the bed going down and then I can plant stuff behind it, around it. It'll be fine. I couldn't find bell peppers when I was there. They're in a, they're in a wonky spot. Oh. Sometimes you just make a spot for stuff. Since I don't really know what's gonna be in that row, I can plant the, that tithonia. My basil is dying of heat stroke. We are gonna get this in the ground right now. One is Tulsi basil and the other is Genevieve's basil. And Tulsi basil is a basil that I like to use for tea. It just makes you happy. And then the tincture is actually used to treat depression um, in some people. Obviously the Genevieve's basil is used for, you know, what is culinary this culinary basil the Tulsi basil is my absolute favorite the smell is the smell of happiness it's just the truth this is gonna be my tomato row and Idea. so what we'll do is we'll go ahead and mark where the tomatoes are gonna go and then we'll put the basil in between the tomatoes <music> that basil and tomatoes are a companion plant meaning that they grow well together they work together to attract good bugs they work together to repel bad bugs that's one reason I plant basil with tomatoes and then the other reason is just because it's convenient because a lot of times if you're making something with with tomatoes you want basil <sighs> my house is trash so I think we should harvest and actually go inside yeah <laughs> and make these kids clean up look at the yard we're gonna make these boys clean up their messes it's hot it is hot out feeling? here I say we, I say we harvest, go in, clean, cook dinner. 
then come back and then come back out when it's cool okay and i think the kids will fall apart if we don't feed them real food soon Alrighty. so we can completely take this row cover off and leave it off because we're about to harvest the little tiny bit that's left okay. and then we don't even have to worry about it because the bugs can have it I usually wouldn't break the stalks, break, break the leaves down like that, but I'm actually getting ready to pull this whole bed. It's done. These are just the last small heads of broccoli. Um, you know, the, the big heads have come and gone. So I'm just grabbing these last small heads and now it's getting too hot. So even if these plants produce more shoots, they'll be way too bitter to eat. And mostly they're just gonna bolt anyway. He's on a pea hunt. Oh any. yeah, get the peas. We've not had any, so he's like, oh. <laughs> well, we ate it. a lot. Um, there was a bunch. Like this one. This morning there was a lot, but we wiped them out. Oh, did you already come eat the peas this morning? Well, in cooler climates, like I had a friend of mine who lives in I think Minnesota, or maybe it's Wisconsin. But anyway, it's a much cooler climate. She grows block broccoli all season. Dang. All summer she grows broccoli because it sends out shoots. See all the shoots? Yeah. This has all been harvested already. Sugar snap peas are the favorite snack. Maybe cucumbers once those come in. <laughs> I wonder if we'll even get any big juicy ones. Y'all are gonna eat them all down. Here's the cabbage and like the broccoli, some of the heads are very small and some are massive. I mean, seriously, look at this here. Wow. This is not getting harvest today, just one for dinner because I don't have time to deal with it this evening. Perfection. Perfection, if I say so myself. This is gonna be delicious for dinner. <sighs> Got it. Now, that's a cabbage. I'm proud of this first year garden cabbage. I, and I'm just so grateful for it. The reason I believe I was successful at growing cabbage and broccoli, three things that I do that make me at least somewhat successful, if not fully successful, growing the right varieties for my area, weeding, making sure that the beds had compost because this is terrible soil, and of course, covering with netting. <laughs> covering with netting is your best friend with these things. That way, the cabbage moths don't lay their eggs on your beautiful plants and then hatch out these worms that just eat everything up. So, oh, and also, super important, these are cold weather crops, so you have to plant them on time. You have to plant them early, or you're just not gonna get heads, or if you get heads, they're just gonna bolt. The sun just went behind some clouds, which hopefully mean we're gonna get rain. Rain has been few and far between this year. And it is like a whole different world outside right now. Dinner is well on its way. We're having cabbage, rice, and sausage. Super fast, super easy, feeds the crowd. I still do that, and it's my popular. <laughs> I'm proud of myself when I remember I have a bop. I would be too. But I must just love me too. Okay, I'm gonna play Joyful Song now. Look at all the water inside it from the last spring, probably. Isn't that is cool? so cool. Spicy. What? The cabbage is spicy. It could be a little bit because it's been hot. Why? It makes it spicy? Like bitter? Or like spicy? bitter. Alright, I'm about to find out if there's any bugs in here. Oh, no, it's spicy. You're crazy. Oh, it's You guys demolished that broccoli. Yeah. I'm gonna get a little. Well, there's still a little to be had. One thumbs up. Two thumbs up. We looked at the weather report and it's a 90% chance of rain in like half an hour. So I'm hoping. I'm hoping I don't have to water. There's one more thing I really want to get planted. So I'm gonna eat super fast and go out there and plant it and hopefully beat the rain. Hey Joy, grab that rake for me real quick. We are quickly going to run down here and throw in hundreds of sunflowers. A really economical way to plant a large sunflower patch is to buy black oil sunflower seeds. This is usually for animal feed or for bird feed. And so you can buy a bag like that for like 20 bucks, which that many sunflower seeds from like, um from like a seed company would be astronomically expensive. I tilled 
a strip. I wish it was wider, but it took forever with the little tiller I was using. I tilled a strip all the way around part of my property so that we can have a gorgeous sunflower patch for beauty, but also to share with the neighborhood, to share with friends. It's gonna be so fun. So all I'm gonna do is pull back a layer of this dirt. Hi! Oh, hey, hey, wait. Come back! Another handful! <laughs> Ready? Hopefully this rain actually comes. <laughs> Otherwise, I am going to be watering in the dark tonight. Oh, let's put some right here. Okay, let's put some all along the edge of here. Oh, I know where we could do another strip real quick. Hey guys, see this big spot of compost that got left here? Let's do a whole bunch right here. I hope that storm is coming right here. Okay. Unleash oh over the garden. Get you a friend that will come over for play dates and want to work in the garden with you. We trade though. Mm -hmm. When we go to her house, that's what we do there too because it's so fun. It is fun and it needs to get done. It needs to get done, but it's like, I think we both so enjoy the work of it. You know, it's not, it doesn't feel to me like a chore really. No, it's I'm always just like, we got, it was, it was it's like the best fun. day. <laughs> Look how much we got done. So much. You guys, this is about to explode. You're gonna be amazed at how fast this grows. You That'd girls cool. are so good at helping, thank you. Don't forget to check out Heather's channel at Land Tree Air. And I will link it below, of course. Thank you for joining us and we will see you in another video real soon.